Welcome to Module 11, our module on performance measurement. So again, this is a management accounting class. We want to use financial information to help us make decisions for our company. And one important decision a company has to make is it needs to kind of you need to know how well you're doing and how do you measure success at your company. And if you're not succeeding, how do you know? What are the indicators of success or failure and areas of improvement? So that's a big topic this week. And we really come at it from three angles. First, we're going to talk about two sort of single number indicators. One is called ROI, return on investment. The other is called residual income. We're going to learn how to compute them and what they mean and kind of where they're useful or maybe where they're not. We'll do examples there. The focus of this video is going to be on the balance scorecard and uh, well, I'll save that for just a few moments from now. We'll discuss the balance scorecard and again there are many examples of that this chapter. And the final topic is transfer pricing. Let's, though, in this video, discuss the balance scorecard. The other two topics will be discussed in their own videos with their own problems. So what the balance scorecard says is if we're measuring the performance of our company, so often people focus and fixate on this one. They focus and fixate on the financial. They say, listen, if we're making money, we're happy. And if we're not making money, we're sad. And so they measure the profit or the uh, revenue, you know, total revenues or revenue growing or shrinking. What's happening to revenue? Uh, ROI is a nice example. Share price. And we could list for days of financial measures of success. And often these are an end of themselves. In other words, we want financial success, so we measure what financial success is, and we chase financial success. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to be financially successful. You've started a business, you've risked your money, you're spending your time and energy. You should want to be financially successful if you are running a business, if you're a manager of business, and if you are an owner of business. All desirable outcomes. What the balance scorecard says, though, is that these are just that. These are outcomes, and you're not going to have financial success if you don't satisfy these three other areas first. So why focus on the outcome when you should be focused on the input? And they don't use the word outcome or output and input. They use the word lag, as in lagging indicator. It comes at the end, and these ones are called lead, as in leading indicators. So we have our lagging indicator, financial measures, and we have our leading indicators, learning and growth, internal processes, and customer. And I'm gonna give you an example, and this example is one of a bank. So we have a bank, and maybe the profits aren't what the owners or the shareholders of the bank were hoping, and they survey the customers to figure out what's going wrong, and they learn through those surveys that their service is really slow. Your customers come in, they're standing in line, it just takes forever, and so people don't like that bank very much. And they've said, you know, a myriad of reasons we might not be as profitable as they want, but we've identified that as one that we would like to improve on. Okay, so let's look at this from a learning and growth perspective. We can train employees and managers to serve customers faster. That would be something we could measure. Now, it's important to know when we talk about our financial, we're measuring, we're putting numbers on it. Oh, our profit was a million dollars this year and $2 million last year. So we were uh, less profitable this year than last year. Uh oh, and all these ones we put numbers on. And so with a balanced scorecard, it's a scorecard. You're, you're keeping score. So it's not enough to say, I'm going to train employees and managers to serve customers faster. You have to say something like 95% of employees receive speed <laughs> training or whatever we want to call it, right? The sort of speed up issue, 95% of employees go through it and, you know, the managers go through their own training about when to open new 
uh, checkouts or whatever it's called, teller stations at the bank. Um, and not only are we going to measure it, we're also going to hold people responsible to it. So we'll say, okay, this is, you know, the HR department. Uh, part of your role in HR and our organizational behavior is to put on these sessions and make sure at least 95% of our employees are receiving it. If fewer than 95% of them receive it, maybe there's some penalty. Or if more than 95% of people receive it, maybe there's a bonus. We're going to tie some of your incentive to making sure people get this training. If 95% of the people receive the training, presumably wait times decrease. Now, again, we would want to put a number on it. I'm going to make up numbers here. Well, I'll just say wait times go down by 25% or more. That's our target. And again, we can hold people in operations accountable. Okay, well, if everybody got the training and our wait times are still higher, we got to come up with a new training. We got to come up with a new plan. Maybe we have to hire more people. Maybe there's a different thing, but that's what we're going to be measuring. Wait times go down by 25%. If few customers were waiting eight minutes, now they're only waiting six minutes, right? We're trending in the right direction. If we're successful, we train our employees. If wait times drop 25%, what do we think? Well, happier customers. Now, it's nice I drew a smiley face, but how do we measure that? Well, we might take a customer survey and maybe that's what revealed this problem in the first place, right? We, we surveyed our customers and there's 10 questions and question number four was about wait time. And they all said, you know, strongly disagree that, you know, we have a good wait time. And so maybe uh, we received a, uh, two out of five on question number four, or whatever the one on what was wait time. And we say new surveys answer number four at, let's say four out of five or better. So again, we're setting a goal, we're setting a target. And the whole thing is if we don't get customers to believe that we are actually fast, you know, they're starting to agree, not strongly disagree with our, our speed, um, then we should go back to the drawing board. We should revisit this. But the idea is, and they link together, if most of our employees receive speed training, then wait times will fall by 25% or more. Then customers will be more positive to us on our surveys. Then that's going to lead to better customer retention and better profits. So that's the lagging indicator. But what Balance Scorecard says is, do these things that I'm highlighting blue, do them first, measure them, chase them, push your employees in these directions or push your company in these directions. And the thing I've highlighted in green, that's almost an afterthought. That is a lagging indicator. You won't get that till later focus on the things that you can control, the, the profit or the increased revenue, that's an outcome of your good work on the things on the left. So that's the focus of the balanced scorecard. It says, don't just look at the financial, take a balanced approach to what you measure and what you're after in your company. Okay, that's it for Balanced Scorecard. As I said, there's other topics this chapter, and I hope you'll stay with me. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.